Hello everyone and welcome back to another Stratico video. This is your host Jonas and we're making a tier video today with um, Siegfried as our co-host or guest. Welcome Siegfried, thank you for joining. Thank you, hello. Hello. Uh, yeah, so we're back with uh, finally with some more Lumineth content. Um, the new GHB has been out for quite a while now and I really wanted to make a tier video but then I also felt like we needed to gather some experience and information first before we did. Uh, it's been out for a couple of weeks, uh, months now, I would say. Uh, the results are coming in. Um, right, I don't know, Siegfried, whether you kind of follow along with how Lumineth are doing percentage-wise in, in win rates. Do you? Yes, yes. Yeah. Um, it's not looking great so far, uh, though we did just receive a couple of buffs, so the new information is still coming in from that. It does seem like it improved our standings a little bit, but we're, we're sort of mid-tier right now, I feel. Yeah, um, I feel that uh, sometimes the uh, percentages uh, do not fully uh, represent what actually happens with an army. Yeah. Um, for example, uh, regarding Stormcast, I believe they are always higher than they appear to be. But due to the fact that they have always many f new players uh, joining uh, in tournaments and all that, that for sure uh, gets their uh, percentages to drop. Yeah. So uh, similarly, in our case, I believe that uh, many of the people who uh, participated in the competitive scene were, were really hung up on Teclis. So mm -hmm. as soon as he wasn't that good, they struggled to make lists and had to uh, at last improvise and uh, try new things. So I believe that uh, uh, paired with uh, the changes we got in points and in rules, I believe we will be uh, coming up in a more, th more of a healthy place. Yeah, yeah. So a bit of a spoiler there about Teclis <laughs> and his performance. Uh, it's not like he has performance issue, issues, just to be clear. <laughs> um, but uh, he, he has dropped a little bit in usefulness, I guess. So um, for this uh, tier making video, um, I've done two of these before now about Lumineth and I al always do them solo. I didn't invite you this time, Seek, because it's j we just have a, uh, an interesting look on, on things, I feel. You're quite familiar with making our videos now as well. And um, I think our thoughts are sometimes a little bit different, a little bit more nuanced, uh, depending on the subject. So that I think is going to be an interesting uh, time. Yeah, well, it's always uh, nice to have a, a second opinion and, you know, different points of view and exchange yeah. between them. Yeah. So um, by the time that this video is out, uh, Coach will also have uploaded a, a review um, of his um, or a re-review of, of Lumineth with a guest, Jared, and I watched a bit of that video already and it's uh, it's looking very good. So you, it kind of matches um, a little bit of that energy or, or that idea at least. But I, I think here we're going into the nitty gritty of all the specific units uh, more. And if you want a more common overview, shout out to Coach's video. It's, uh, it's looking to be a good one. All right. So uh, Sikia, before we made this video, I quickly... Um, shared some thoughts with you on how we're going to approach this um, tier making video. So we have five tiers here and we did opt to not include the auto include green button here because neither Sieg nor me feel like there's anything that isn't auto include in the Lumineth roster right now. There's, uh, I would say, two popular builds that run a, a wide variety of units. But we did choose to give the green um, tier, the top tier, uh, the name Awesome, which means it's probably good in al almost any list. Then we have Strong, uh, that which is a, which are units that are also very good in almost all lists. Then we're looking at Solid, that would just be units that you're not really hurting yourself by choosing, but are also not always the best ones. They're just there as a backbone of your army, for example. Uh, niche is not per se bad, I would say. Um, it is mostly units that fit a sp very specific play style. And sometimes niche units can be very, very awesome too. So keep that in mind. It's not because it's n in the second bottom tier that it's bad. It's just very depending on what kind of game and list you're running. And then we do have the tier that means they're probably kind of bad right now. And that's the avoid tier. So you, you probably want to avoid putting those in your lists. 
Is there anything you want to add uh, here, Sieg? No, no, I think your description is uh, perfect. Yeah, okay, cool. All right, let's start off with the Venari because they were the first units that we got. They're the backbone of our army. They are the uh, Lumineth Militia, which I still find very weird because they don't feel like Militia at all, but then they're perfectionist elves, I guess. And we're going to start off with uh, the OG Lumineth units, the Wardens. Uh, Seek, why don't you take this one first? Uh, how are you feeling about Wardens right now? Well, uh, I... <laughs> I will tend to put them in the avoid category. Okay. Um, or uh, if I want to be a, a bit more uh, uh, objective, perhaps solid. Um, yeah. I don't think there are uh, in, at their core a bad unit, but they uh, they are not uh, performing um, as they should due to uh, factors that. Uh, are outside of their war scroll. Mm -hmm. um, since the new uh, battle tome, uh, as soon as we uh, lost all our uh, ways to mitigate battle shock, I believe from that moment on, uh, wardens have become a liability on yeah. that uh, on that part. Because not only that, but there are also uh, many abilities in quite a few battle tomes that uh, negate or uh, make you not be able to use Inspiring Presence, which is the only uh, other tool we really have to uh, protect them from Battleshock tests. And uh, for me, that makes a huge difference, a really huge difference. And also, there were all, uh, there, uh, the a weakness they had was uh, a weakness uh, they share with uh, Sentinels, is that they are very reliant on getting Power of His. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and I mean, I think they would be okay if they were 30 points cheaper, for example, like if they were the same points as um, Blade Lords right now. But they're 150, I, I, think, I, I think, still. And they're kind of, uh, that's kind of a, a punishment that they're receiving um, because Sentinels were just so good. And you had to take Wardens to get your Sentinels in battle line. And they kind of tried to nerf Sentinels by. Uh, bumping up the Warden's costs, but now that Sentinels are not being ran as often or not at all anymore, um, Wardens really are paying for sins that are not their own, which is too bad because I do feel like their War Scroll is still very good for a just battle line unit. It is. And um, uh, point for point, they are our best DPS unit Yeah. if we get their spell off. Yeah, exactly. Thing. Yeah, and don't forget, I mean, they have three inch range, the um, restrictions on um, their formation have, have also been lifted, so they can still charge in Shining Company, they can run in Shining Company, so there's they've only really received buffs throughout our new book. The Just the simple dance that is, the game has changed a little bit, first of all. And second of all, you, you are paying like a very hefty price for something that's not really worth it. So yeah, I, I kind of agree with you here. I would put them in either solid or a void. I do still think they have a place in a lot of lists, but just not as a um, as multiple units of them, right? You're not going to run uh, 30 or 40 Wardens. I think if you're running Wardens, you're probably running like maybe one unit or, or two max. Um, yes. Yeah. Yes. Let's let's put them in uh, solid for now because they do serve a little Great. bit of a purpose. Um, besides, you know, their own war scroll, they do make Dawn Riders battle line still, which is quite potent when it comes to battle attacks. But we'll we'll talk about that when we, when we get to uh, Dawn Riders. But then we come to the Sentinels, and see, I mean, we both have a love and hate relationship with these guys because they have been a crutch for any Lumineth player for such a long time. Um, and both of us, I remember, feel, same with Teclos, by the way, that there were also options outside of running them. And I think yeah. now we've finally reached that point, right? We're seeing lists with no Sentinels. And both in our Discord and in different Discords, I've, I just don't see any lists anymore that include Sentinels. Do you care to explain why that change has happened? Well, uh... 
there are uh, several factors, but the the, uh, the nail on the coffin, uh, so to speak, is uh, the new lookout, sir. Yeah. Because the damage of the Sentinels, because when we changed books, we lost uh, Lambent Light, mm -hmm. which is the one way we had to make them exceed in damage. Yeah. Then we, uh, we replaced it with the Helion ability, uh, which was not as good, in my opinion, as Lambent Light, because Lambent Light could be used uh, from very far away. Um, but still, people made, uh, made use of it and uh, had very good results. And we lost that too then. And so, if you remove these things, the damage of the Sentinels is really few, really low, I'm sorry. Um, so, 10 Sentinels will average do like 3 Mortal Wounds, and you have paid uh, uh, quite a premium for that. So, if you can't uh, snipe the heroes, the small heroes, which now Lookout Sir is, um, is making it so, um, there, there is no uh, role for them, really. There is nothing that they can do uh, which will uh, help you win the game, in my opinion. Yeah, yeah. they were our one sniper unit that was good against heroes, and now that you can't snipe heroes anymore, there's really no point in taking them. Their damage output is just way too low. I mean, comparatively, it's half of the, half of the damage that wardens do. Yeah. S simply put. Um, and you, there are ways to improve Wardens much, e much more easily than there are ways to improve Sentinels. So right now I've not really found any way to utilize them well. There is no sub-faction that really boosts them. There is their, their Lantern from their high Sentinel just doesn't do anything. It ignores cover, which is redundant in the current Age of Sigmar um, terrain rules, almost at least. So there's really no point not in having them except for you know buffing in the range of your ballistas but then you could also just take a ballista and save yourself 40 points correct yeah so i think we're both in agreement here that they're going into the bottom category right yes yeah i mean yes. how the mighty have fallen i think the last time that i made a tier video they were maybe not top tier anymore but very close to top tier but man I mean, I'm not sorry that I'm not seeing any lists anymore with 60 Sentinels, but I wish there was still a reason why you could include like 20, because they look so good. Yeah, the thing is with uh, the Mortal Wounds, it is difficult for, uh, for anyone to balance their rules, yeah. because they either get some bonuses and buffs and they become very, very good, or they don't, and then they are not good at all. So. And I believe if it weren't for the new uh, lookout, sir, they will be solid, a solid choice. In my yeah, opinion. I, but I was kind of uh, thinking now, about um, about our chat here in the days before we actually did it, and how we could improve on either the hurricane units or the sentinel units. And it would be so cool, for example, if their lantern allowed them to target heroes um, outside of eight, inside of eighteen inches, instead of inside of. 12 like the normal lookout sir yeah that that will be great but uh that is uh, a thing that they can possibly do for the fourth uh, yeah. edition because i believe this lookout sir will stay yeah yeah and it's it's good that that the, that, that rule exists um it's not yes, that we're fighting I, that it's just so, that it kind of takes away the whole purpose of sentinels yes because uh, with this lookout sir you can you either have a unit that is able to go uh, within 12 inches and take a shot or you your shooting must be so strong that it is enough to uh, murder units like yeah. Karadron, like uh, Slanes mm -hmm. do mm -hmm. that uh, and perhaps the to an extent the rivers of uh, Idonef are really strong shooting units which you can use to actually uh, kill other units rather yeah. than go and snipe uh, yeah. specific parts of, a, of an army. Yeah, and I mean, even if they were able to target small heroes, uh, like before the Lookout Sir uh, rework, I still think they would have lost a lot of efficiency because there's just so many units now, or so many armies, excuse me, 
that have a bodyguard rule. And they do very badly against bodyguards. Or a word save. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay, let's move on to the Dawn Riders. Um, do you want to go first here, Seek, or shall I? Oh, I have no problem. Do you want me to go? I... Sure, yeah. Go for it. I think they're awesome. <laughs> yes, I do agree. Um, they were always uh, great. Well, well, not in a way that I would have wanted them to be great. Uh, because I would like them to be our heavy cavalry and our fast hammer and all that, and they are they are, just aren't that. Yeah. But uh, now at their current points, uh, for what they are good at doing, they are be the best. Because mm -hmm. for 120 points, you get a really fast unit, which is um, quite tough for their points. You get a wizard. Um, you get a horde killer. Um, I believe that uh, if we had a category of auto include, they will be really close to it. Yeah, I sure. feel that well, any list that I have uh, created in the past uh, few years, even before they get to 120 points, almost always include two units of five, just mm -hmm. for screen uh, objective grabbing, extra casting. It's they're a great tool, a great tool in my and opinion. And battle tactics, right? They are so yeah. good at completing battle tactics this, this edition. Yeah, I mean, if we if we decided to change the awesome uh, tier uh, to auto include, this is probably the only unit that I would say is auto include in all Lumineth builds. And I do agree, it's always two units of five, right? There's really not a lot of point in reinforcing them. I mean, they're they're very tanky if you reinforce them because it's hard to chew through. Minus one to hit, four up save with eight accords and all out defense. You you have some uh, leeway there, uh, but I do feel like two units of five is a sweet spot. Uh, you probably want three fast elements in all army lists now anyway. So two units of Dawn Riders and I'm plus either a teleport or a wind spirit or something like that. Um, it's very good for make, uh, getting those battle tactic tactics in. And my, my way of using them has also very uh, very much changed. They used to be my, my screen. I always deployed them in like the very unlore friendly um, <laughs> conga line where they were just covering my, my uh, damage dealers. But now I place them on the sides of my army like you should. And I ha have them ready to uh, use for a surround, surround and destroy, for example or to grab some objectives on the side. So yeah, they are very good, especially with Speed of Fish. I don't think I'd ever take, or almost never take a different spell from Speed of Fish, maybe Overwhelming Heat, but that's that, that's about it. Yeah, yeah, agreed, agreed. Um, well, I did make a change in my uh, most uh, recent list where I, I have a, an extra spell, so I got them uh, Overwhelming Heat and uh, Ethereal Blessing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because I got an idea which I had it but didn't quite use it. Um, because I don't have lists that are one drop, so usually uh, people uh, give me the first round or whatever yeah. th they choose. Yeah. Um, so a good strategy if they Say, tell you to go first, you can uh, have two units of five, put Mystic Shield on the one and the Thrill Blessing on the other, and have them run in front of the enemy army, score your, uh, your battle tactics, and then it won't be so easy for the opponent to go through them, because the one unit will ignore end, and the other one will have a Mystic Shield, they will be for sure able to use a crystal, even if they get roared, so they can have a 2-up save or a 1-up save and the other unit will, will ignore it so you can speed bump them. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, and I, get I, ahead on point. Mm -hmm. The only risk to that is if you lose your Dawn Riders early, it's sometimes much harder to complete your battle tactic plan. Um, and by plan I mean if you're playing competitively or probably planning ahead on what battle tactics you're doing what, what rounds. Um, and I do feel like if, if both get destroyed, uh, I lose a lot of my, my capability to complete battle tactics. But that's m maybe just my playstyle. Well, it's, it's about, this is about list building, really. Because 
uh, I feel what, that when you make a list, you have to be to have to have three battle uh, tactics that you will almost auto uh, yeah. uh, achieve, and another one which is really close to that, and the fifth one uh, can be the more uh, tricky one because. Yeah. In in my uh, experience, at, at least most games end by the the end of third or fourth battle round. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. okay, let's move on to the ballistas here because uh, our video is gonna take ages if uh, if we don't get a move on. Uh, ballistas, yeah, that also a unit that you would never see before this edition, and I think they're kind of making, I wouldn't say a comeback because they've never been popular, but they're kind of making a name for themselves now. Um, they are what well, sentinels aren't anymore. Not that they're uh, good at sniping units, but they, their output is decent. Um, they're, they shoot very, very far, especially if you're having if, if you're running at least two ballistas close to each other, then they're shooting 36 inches, which is maybe the furthest profile that there is in uh, the entire Age of Sigmar roster. Um, and they they have very nice stats. I mean, they hit on twos, one on threes, if I re remember correctly. Um, their damage is D3, which is annoying. Uh, but against monsters, it's just flat out three, which is very nice and troublesome. These guys really did a number when, uh, they, when uh, they were used against me when I was running my Sylvaneth uh, army with a lot of um, uh, tree lords. Man, those blisters, if you if you fail a couple of saves with flat three damage, that really puts in the hurt. Yeah, for sure. Um, well, I think they need some uh, another point reduction. Mm -hmm. Now they are 120, I think. They, get, they got one, but they need more. Uh, ideally, I would think they, would, they should be 100 points. Okay. But even 110 is fine. Because at that point cost, you can say that, okay, I will invest 330 points. So I have three, so, so I can have three of those as monster killers. Yeah. Because I believe that is the their main um, usage now. Or, I mean, if you have three, you, you can uh, kill a screen, remove a screen yeah. that uh, may uh, hinder you. But uh, I believe that we will see some uh, return to monsters. Not in a way uh, that we will see list with many of them, but they will have one key monster. If you uh, saw the uh, new uh, previews mm -hmm. uh, they put out yesterday, they had two monsters. Yeah. And I believe both of these characters will be quite uh, strong and solid and they will get included in, in lists. Yeah. So, if we see even list with one uh, cr uh, crucial monster in them, I believe the the ballistas uh, will have a place as long as they get, uh, I believe, uh, one more point reduction. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. The thing is, if you drop their points by too much, I mean, if you go if you go to a hundred points, they're so spammable, and I, I fear that they're just gonna be taken in droves. Like if you, that you, you're almost taking five or something. Well, yes, but no, because the thing that they had that Sentinels didn't have is the limit of four uh, war machines. Yeah, that's fair. So you can't go above four. So there is uh, a safety uh, measure there uh, from the get go. Yeah. Even yeah. if they become really, really good, you can't put more than four. Yeah, you so can't reinforce them. them. Army of them. Yeah. And they're hard to squeeze into your one drop if you're still keen on taking that. So, yeah, right. that that's fair. Um, so yeah, that, then we come to the point where you have to decide whether they're gonna go in strong or solid. What do you think? I feel solid. Yeah, same. at the moment. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Right. Uh, moving on to the blade lords and these guys. Wow. I mean, the both of us were already big fans of these. I feel seek. But they're only getting better and better as the edition goes on, right? Or as this GHB goes on. Yeah, for sure. Um, uh, do you want me to go first? Yeah, go for it. To... Yeah. All right. Uh, I think they're awesome too. <laughs> Agreed. Um, because uh, I still feel uh, they. It, it may be nice to get them a bit more cheaper, like even five points, but 
they are very, very good at what they're doing. And now uh, all the stars have aligned and they can be really useful because we see highly uh, focused elite units that uh, have great saves, uh, both in uh, Korn and in Stormcast and uh, in OCR. And we see highly defensive uh, units and builds. And Blade Lords have um, just the thing to uh, punch through. Their damage output is uh, medium, mid tire, I would say, but it is so efficient that you can actually plan your strategy around it, which almost no unit in the game has, because um, it's just a two up. You can't get debuffed. Uh, on the to hit, you can't get debuffed on the to wound, and you can't get debuffed on uh, the number of attacks because they have one if you use the perfect strike. So uh, the enemy doesn't really have a way to uh, hinder them except for a ward save. Which, uh, if, if they have a ward save, they have it versus almost any other uh, unit, so it doesn't make really a difference. And then there is the bodyguard rule which, uh, in my opinion, really helps and makes, makes our Skinari feel safe. Uh, because I feel the having uh, three uh, Skinari heroes is the way to go, as a minimum, now. Um, to get your, uh, your magic, your anti-magic. So, they fill all these roles. They don't suffer uh, as Wardens do from uh, Battleshock, because it's half the number of models and they have uh, seven bravery instead of six and even this one uh, point difference makes uh, makes a huge difference you know uh, in reality and also they can be a horde killer because we have zombies we have um, squigs and they can also do some good work versus those and they are also a great target for uh, uh, Horfrost spell, I think it is, which uh, can improve their rent, and they have none, so even if you roll a 1 or 2, they get uh, minus 1 rent, also uh, with the uh, possibility of getting it to uh, minus 3. And the final uh, bonus they got is the Wizard Finder's Battalion, which makes them have plus 1 attack versus any wizard unit, and you know, having 10 of them do 18 mortal wounds on Nagas or Alarier or, or uh, Archaeon or Belakor or any unit that may still, uh, or big unit that may still use the Arcane Tome just to Mystic Seal themselves, uh, it, it's a huge threat, a really huge threat. Yeah, you. I mean, I mean, you covered it all there, except for one minor point that I would still like to add. But man, I had these bullet points that I want to talk about with for the Blade Lords, and I'm like, well, okay, see, we talked about that. Okay, so yeah, very thorough explanation. I completely agree with everything that you said. They are so fle flexible. They're also, I mean, you put them in your list, and you know that you're gonna get some mileage out of them, one way or another. Uh, it ne doesn't necessarily have to be damage, as you mentioned. Um, it can be all sorts of damage, by the way. But it's also just very good as a um, a way to guarantee your grand strategy. Because if you're running Sonari and Blade Lords, you're probably running Spellcasting Savant. And with the Blade right. Lords there, it is very hard to chew through a Sonari general. I think I fully agree. Yeah, I think the only thing that we can we can also still add on their plus sides here is uh, they are they can be made battleline pretty easily now because you're as you mentioned you probably want to run two or three scenari anyway um, and they are very cheap. You mentioned them you wanting to um, see a further points decrease to them, but I do feel that they're in a very good place for one twenty. Oh, they are. I, I, as I said, like five points or ten maximum. Yeah. Maximum, not not yeah. anything. Uh, yeah. Because the, still, if you compare them to some other units around those points, they still lack in some ways. But they make up for it in utility. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, them in shining company, and 
they don't require any buffs. In the beginning, when they got reworked, I feel like a lot of people wanted to run the Venari Lord Regent alongside them to ha bump their uh, mortal wounds from um, semi-metal weapons from five to uh, from six to fives. But then you don't really need that at all because the perfect strike kind of does the work <laughs> most of the time anyway. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, uh, the Vanari Lord Regent becomes a tax for them if you include him yeah, just for exactly. just for that reason. Mm -hmm. And then you, they're not so cheap anymore. Yeah, I mean, they're they're just so great. As you mentioned, their hits can't be reduced. Saves don't really matter, so so they'll do a number on garrison units as well. Uh, yeah, overall, I think a awesome unit to say the least. Yeah, and as, as a final note, uh, they also save you time, because if you go magic heavy, you will take more time in your hero phase, yeah. and they make the combat phase that much faster, mm -hmm. and on a competitive level, level that is uh, also valuable. Yeah, yeah. I think the only um, criticism that I would have about the Blade Lords is, for the longest time, they had a rule about their banners, banners the Physician more banners, that made them um, immune to spell effects on a 4+. Plus. And now that we've finally come to addition where that could have been very strong or even useful, they lost that ability. So that is a bit of a bummer. That would make them so good though. Wow. Yeah, and the tragic thing is that it feels like they didn't have much space in the war scroll and they removed yeah. them for that reason. Yeah, I... exactly. Okay, moving on to the banner blades. Um, this guy just keeps dropping in points. He's 80 points now, which is as cheap as heroes can get, I feel. And still, yeah. I don't know about you, uh, Secret, but I, I would still not take him. There are some builds that can be interesting, but then I'm like, well, I'd still rather pay 30 points extra to get a Caligray, for example. Well, that, that is a great uh, pass for me because I did include him in my <laughs> most recent list. Okay. And well, at 80 points, he's not expensive. So I found out that in my recent lists, I didn't um, have uh, a place in on the shrine for a hero. And uh, that was because I want my my scenario heroes to be w with my blade lords and to be uh, more in the front to give the word to uh, to cast blizzard you know and all that yeah and so no one was uh, on the shrine having this dude uh, you can put him on the shrine he gets a two up save minus one to hit uh, he's a totem so he can you can you can actually make use of the um, of the extra uh, command ability we get mm -hmm. uh, per battle round mm -hmm. You uh, have the reroll on casting and unbinding within 24 inches, which is also liberating strategically. Yeah, for sure. Um, but the the main reason I included him, and I believe that is uh, the thing that pushes him higher in this uh, GHB uh, era, is the fact that he's your best candidate uh, for wizard finders, because this battalion requires you to have a non-wizard hero. Yeah. And he's the cheapest we have, and <laughs> he's not a wizard. So unless we uh, go and get uh, an ally, which w which the ally won't be at 80 points most likely, uh, he's our best choice. And I mean, the rural uh, charges can also uh, save you some, uh, some points, and you get a late uh, mortal wound uh, minus one to hit uh, ability, which which the, those are real bonuses, nothing, not 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 uh, the real reason for you to include yeah. him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I would I would do I do like the uh, the uh, re rolls on the charges if you're running a cow heavy list, which is totally viable now, by the way, um, because them sitting there is painful and having him give them re rolls is nice. But in, he's also probably uh, leaving the shrine if you're uh, using him for that uh, reason. Yeah, well, as I said, uh, if you want wizard finders, he's your guy. Yeah. And chances are uh, that if you're if you're running uh, multiple units of blade lords, at least two, chances are it's not a bad choice to include him. And yeah. for all the extra reasons. 
Yeah, I just feel like I I love the um, the the battalion that you're mentioning here, the Wizard Finders. I talked about it before uh, Ryan and Nick and I were uh, going to the team tournament. I was actually planning on including that battalion um, in the same way that you mentioned, but we talked about it a little bit and. Sure, it'll be very strong against those hero characters that you mentioned, but in a lot of cases, it's also not quite as good. And then you're you're just having to decide whether you want to put your Blade Lords into the Wizard Finders or a Battle Regiment or a Warlord Battalion, for example. Um, and then it becomes a little bit difficult to, for me per personally. But I can still see him being included in this just simply because he's so very, very cheap. And as you mentioned, he does have a 3 plus save flat out, which is very nice. Yeah, I mean, outside of Battle Regiment, I think uh, you can really uh, use the Wizard Finders uh, Battalion. Because it, uh, even if, uh, because, you know, many of those units we mentioned are fast. And Blade Lords are not that fast. So one could make the argument that uh, people can avoid them. But first of all, if your two main uh, units of your army are these so okay where will they go this yeah. is the bulk of your army they will be on the objective scoring so even if uh, uh, they don't send their heroes uh, yeah okay they don't participate in the battle most likely mm -hmm. so it's a psychological warfare win for you either way yeah. even if you don't actually get to go and murder those units yeah so would you be fine putting into niche then or do you want to put them in solid um, well, either way is, is fine, I think. Yeah, because since we're since we're mentioning the Wizard Finders Battalion most of the time anyway, I feel like he fits into a niche slot yes. where yes, you want agreed. to have him for a very specific purpose. Agreed. Okay, the Lord Regent then. Uh, she has been good for a very, very long time. I loved using her when she first came out. Uh, she was very tanky. And she did everything that you wanted her to do. She was fast, tanky, had minus one uh, to hit, minus two sometimes even. Um, and then she buffed your Venara units, which you really, really wanted. You wanted to get that free spell cast on, um, or free power of fish on your Sentinels and Wardens. But now with the Wardens and Sentinels kind of dropping off and the, neither the Dawn Riders nor the Blade Lords really wanting power of fish specifically, there is really not a lot of uh usefulness to including her right yeah um i feel that uh, uh she or he belongs in the avoid uh, yeah. category because there is also the thing that uh she doesn't uh get the new lookouts there exactly and she also doesn't have uh, the uh deep thinker ability yeah, yeah. These are really vital, see, because you don't get your uh, most powerful uh, ability, which got buffed mm -hmm. uh, recently, uh, for casting spells, and you also become uh, an easier target. I mean, yes, she she has an extra minus one to hit. She has a six wounds and a three up save, but. Uh, Perhaps if, if she was cheaper, like 130 points or 35, perhaps then. But uh, uh, the circumstances, it's the same thing with uh, uh, with wardens yep. and uh, sentinels. Yep. The circumstances do not do not help her because if you also go for uh, a rune of Senthoi mm -hmm. uh, build up, which for me is is the way to the go one. for yeah, us for sure. Uh, she doesn't even contribute on. Uh, your uh, defensive uh, yeah. capabilities. Yeah, her usefulness is always going to be tied to Venari units and most of the time to Wardens and Sentinels more specifically. And since they're, you know, not as useful as they used to be, uh, she kind of loses a lot of value as well. So what I had also put her in the avoid category. So uh, let's go ahead and do that right away. Uh, which is a pity because I I really love the idea of having a journal on your on her horse or horse horse ish kind of creature um but yes yeah, she's it's a lovely model yeah she's a lovely model and very di dynamic but uh, just not very good anymore right now okay moving on to the twins alania and elthor um if you're okay with it uh, seek i would 
love to chat about these guys first because yes. this is a love story for me. I mean, not between the twins, that would be kind of wrong, but between me and the twins. Um, <laughs> when those models were first released, I remember this so distinctly that I saw their uh, silhouettes, their shadowed silhouettes in the um, teaser. And it was like, oh my God, oh my God, what kind of unit is this going to be? It's like a caster standing on top of a sun. And then it was the twins and there's, their pose is so cool. I mean, there is no model out there like that, except maybe for the two Mangler squeaks. Um, they are a little bit like that, but uh, they look so cool and they were very bad for a very long time. They were super expensive, tw 260 points or something like that i mean even more expensive than altharion and they were definitely worse than he, he was but now they're so cheap 190 180 something like that 190 yes 20 points more expensive than a um scenario enlightener Lightning. which is not in our tier video here because it was not included in the pictures but we'll use a stand-in for hers in, a, in just a bit and you get a full extra body, both, I mean, physically and in game terms. They are also very good in combat. It's almost like they put a wizard uh, scroll on top of Eltharion scroll and then we're like, ta-da! And I love it. I really love it. Especially as you mentioned in a lot of Senthoi builds, which we'll definitely talk about when you come to the Scenari section. Uh, they are both Venari and Sonari, so they're not only very good in combat, they support your Centoy build, they're a two-cast wizard, so they're very good in uh, the current um, GHB as well. They have their built-in 5 plus ward as a ward scroll spell. They can teleport, they can heal, and from turn turn 3 onwards, they're, they're an Eltharion, I feel. You, there are three up safe, I think, and if you give the material blessing, they're almost the same as Ultharion, except that, that they still have the option of teleporting if you roll well or if you uh, build it well. And then you, you're still not considering the fact that they can also be bodyguarded by the Blade Lords. I really love these guys. I wouldn't put them in awesome, but I would definitely put them in strong. How do you feel about them? Well, um,. In the old days, I was never a fan. Uh, I well, I like the two poses separately. I don't like them combined in such a way. Uh, I would prefer if they were side by side on on a ruin or you know something more, a bit of a larger scenic base. Yeah, uh, I would prefer that uh, visually. Yeah. Now, uh, rules wise, they were always very expensive for for what they offered. Always and. It wasn't that they had bad rules per se, but the point cost was uh, prohibitive uh, for me, for my taste at least. Yeah, for sure. Uh, now, on 190 points, I mean, they could go 180. I believe it will be more fair, but uh, they're solid even now. I believe they are a really good choice. Um, and depending on your playstyle, they can also offer you an extra uh, CP which is also nice. They can uh, be comboed with uh, Rune of Senthoi. Um, they can do some late uh, turn uh, damage, you know, because even then their damage is not that great because you can still fail um, those attacks. They're not the same as Altharion, but in the late rounds uh, where uh, the units are smaller and few fewer, uh, they can do uh, some difference. And also they have the one use uh, shooting attack, which can also do some uh, late game damage. I mean, if you just uh, on the fourth uh, battle round get uh, just two unit, two enemy units within uh, the line and they get four damage each, it's still great. Still great. Yeah, and it targets heroes as well. Yes, yes. Yeah. It's, it's, uh, I believe they... Um, I haven't included them in one of my lists uh, as of yet, but I think they uh, are re really solid and perhaps I agree that they can put they can be put in the category of strong. Yeah, I mean, it, it kind of depends on what kind of list you're running, but if you're running a list with both Eltarion and the Twins, they are this double threat, right? And you're dealing 
with one of those, but it's difficult to deal with both of them at the same time. Um, which is why I would put them in strong rather than solid, but they are kind of in the middle of those two tiers, I do agree. Um, I guess if we're looking at the Wardens and the, the um, Ballistas, would you say that the Twins are equal to those kind of units or better than those two? No, no, I, they, I believe they are bottom strong. Yeah, okay, I agree. Right, cool. So yeah, guys, dust off, dust, dust off your twins. And if you don't like the post, you can very easily, you know, cut that contact point because it's very small. And they would, you know, benefit from a bigger base because I do feel like their sculpt is too big for their base size. Um, I do agree there, but, you know, that's not legal. <laughs> so right, we'll have to deal with it. Okay, moving on to uh, the other um, very important piece in our in, mo in a lot of our rosters now. A guy that you never saw before, and ironically, now he's super popular, while I, I'll, I do feel that he's much easier to kill than before because there's so many ways to do mortal wounds now, and he's very susceptible to mortal wounds damage. But he's also very, very strong in all other aspects. Uh, maybe you want to go ahead here, Sieg. Yes, yes. Um, well, I believe he belongs in the awesome category. Um, he, uh, at his points, 230 now, he, got, he even got a reduction. He's one of the best uh, DPS heroes out there. I mean, uh, in my last game, he almost soloed Alariel on his own. He has great damage output, He's, he can be really tough, he's your duelist. I mean, unless the opponent has a very reliable way to put mortal wounds on him, he can uh, outlast even uh, great... I, I had him last two, two rounds with uh, Archaeon in the past. Uh, he's just that good for those points and in our army we really don't have anything that can do <laughs> that can come even close to his damage for 230 points so um, he will be also really close to, to auto include for me now uh, regarding his survivability yes uh, he's better than before with eight wounds as opposed to seven but he's still really vulnerable um, but uh, the fact that he um, he also gets the new lookout sir really helps him because all those shooting units which also did mortal wounds now can't really touch him so yes he can he can be uh, killed with magic or volume of attacks still but i believe he's much more uh, tougher to remove uh, at the moment yeah i agree he's very good and his shooting attack is also um very interesting because it, it kind of is not a shooting attack so you can still uh, target enemy heroes um, outside of 12 inches with it which is very useful and i do feel like that Eltarion opens up two to three extra battle tactics from our book that are, that aren't always as reliably achieved as it is when he's around uh, yes. con conserve eight of course for example is such an easy one to do when you have Eltarion because he has no use for eight of course whatsoever so there's really no reason to ever burn it on him. And he's killing units left and right if you get in, into the good fights with him. Yes, one, one other advantage he has is, is the fact that he's uh, independent, totally. Yeah, yeah. needs you no don't help. Need to buff him. You don't need... You just I mean, need you to can't. You also I can't. <laughs> yeah. yeah, there's no need to buff him, but you also can. So I guess that's also a bit of a downside sometimes. I'm like... Well, this guy's awesome and I would really want to keep him alive, but I, there's really no way that I can help him except for maybe causing protection of fish. Right, but the thing is, if you have uh, like three or four threatening units or hammers yeah. or yeah. units that can do damage, you can't buff the, all of them yeah, at exactly. the same time. Mm -hmm. So you will have to make choices and having him frees up your choices for the other units so you can focus on them. Yeah, and, and Elfarion with Speed of Fish, for example, is such a huge threat that a lot of people aren't prepared for if you're not playing against that kind of list uh, often. Yeah. I would easily, easily run him and a Dawnrinder unit straight into a full Thunderer's filled ship. 
have the Dawn Riders die on the Overwatch, on the uh, Unleash Hell, and then put Altharan in there, and his hits are not getting reduced by, the, by them being garrisoned. And he's also blasting the heroes with his shooting attack as well before he gets in, so... Yeah, he's very good. Let's put him in Awesome, as you mentioned. Hmm. Okay, on to our other big boy, <laughs> Teclis. Uh, yeah, I mean, we talked about him a little bit before. Um, I'm actually very curious where you're going to put him. Seek, I would opt still for solid, but not for strong and awesome anymore. Uh, he used to be an auto include in a lot of lists because he was just such a toolbox. He still is a toolbox, but his tools have counters now, or more obvious counters. Um, for the people who don't really see why that is the case now, because his scroll has not changed, so why would his usefulness change well? You used to do four spells with him all the time on a Templus, and that would be very good because it's very hard to dispel a Templus or unbind the Templus casting attempt. But now with Primal Dice there, you, it's pretty easy actually if um, if you can uh, if if your opponent has some Primal Dice to unbind your Protection of Teclis or your Storm of Searing White Light. And then that's 700 plus points for an auto unbind, which is a little bit painful. Though I do feel like the auto unbind is very strong still, and I mean you can all obviously also just opt to cast only one spell with him that cannot be unbound, which is still very strong. And then he's probably the only way that we're easily winning against the Seraphon list, for example because his aura of, of bouncing back enemy spells is so very strong. So with him there, you can confidently run into a Seraphon uh, Croak list, or you're not even as afraid from Merciless Blizzard as you are with other army builds without him, because he can just auto dispel that spell every time. So he's still very strong, but it's you pay a massive amount of points for one auto unbind spell rebounces that you're not always using and then one auto cast that is not never being unbound so i almost feel like he needs a points drop but that's definitely not gonna happen because i do feel like games workshop just doesn't want to see him in untamable as much anymore what do you think about him well uh, it's not a secret that i was never a fan of tech <laughs> yeah i never used him in my lists i don't re i i love his lore i love his everything and but I just didn't f uh, feel for his rules. I, uh, it's too many points, it's too restrictive for list building, and in, in my opinion, uh, it didn't give me what, uh, what I want. Uh, but that is a, a matter of personal uh, playstyle and, um, and opinion. I always felt that Teclis was in the solid category, and I still believe he, he, he remains there. I, for me, he wasn't uh, strong or awesome. He was always a solid choice. Um, uh, but uh, I believe the best uh, lists we can uh, make are n without him. Due just from the fact that you mm. are... Uh, uh, you, he takes up so many points. Uh, a huge part of, of an army that is already elite and few in models and wounds and that is a disadvantage. Now, regarding this uh, GHB, I believe he he's not that great because, as you said, uh, they can uh, unbind his uh, his spells. And I mean, okay, you can have have him cast two spells on twelve, but then you're not getting what you're paying for. I mean, would you pay uh, 740 points for a 5-up board save? Because cities yeah. can have it with 150. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, Sylvaneth have uh, their um, uh, Lady of Vines. She has a spell. She is less than uh, 300 points. Mm -hmm. uh, Stormcast have it on Gardus, which auto uh, gives this automatically. So um, it's, it's, it doesn't worth it. Uh, the, the strength from, of Teclis comes from his uh, toolbox. Yeah. The fact that you have access to all the lores and you can do teleport, you can do healing, you can uh, use the 
the Mountain Lore to have an, an extra spell that works similarly to uh, the Cathalar one. All this utility, but if your spells don't get through, then what, what's the point? Yeah, and, and you have to remember that... Primal Dice Go ahead. primarily uh, help the defender, not yeah. the attacker. Yeah. yeah, and even on top of that, we're in a magic-heavy season, so every opponent is thinking about countering magic in some way or form. And that's literally the only thing that he's good for. So not only has his casting prowess been reduced, but it's, it's also much easier to bring tools to counter tech list because you're bringing those tools anyway. The opponent is not paying a tax for bringing their own auto unbinds or their own great unbinding heroes because they want that in their army anyway against all the other magic tools that are in the meta right now. So yeah, I do agree there. And with him, you know, with the mirrors being nerfed a little bit, um, his damage output has also gone gone down. So yeah, I would still put him in solid. You're not hurting your list by including him um, specifically. Yes. Um, but there, it, if you are the kind of Luneth player that used to include Teclas in every list, I challenge you to build a list without Teclas. And when you're done putting in all the units you want to put in, you're going to be like, oh, I still have some points left over. Because right. you're used to building a list of 1,300 points and now you can just use a full 2,000 points and that's that's very nice. Um, I, fu I fully agree. Yeah. Um, he's, he's just not that... And we can have better anti-magic, mm -hmm. really. Well, that is uh, a we, perfect we, segue, Seek. Maybe you planned that. <laughs> <laughs> because we're getting into the scenario units now and before we get into every scenario specific unit I just want to mention the artifact that we both talked about a little bit before and that's the rune of Senthoi uh, you, you are kind of the why one of the pioneers I feel especially in our in our specific discord but maybe also in the Lumineth specific discords um, for the Senthoi builds would you care to you know explain to us very quickly what the Sentoy build entails. Yes, uh, I, I was kind of a pioneer on, on this. Um, well, uh, this artifact uh, gives you uh, plus one to unbind and to dispel for each scenario uh, wizard within six inches of the bearer, including the bearer. So if you go the Zytrek way and you have three uh, Scenario heroes in your list, Autom and you uh, choose to the command trait uh, fast learner. Then you, in reality, you have three unbinds with plus four, two of which have a reroll. The second one, and either the first one or the third one from the shrine. So, uh, I mean, I have made some lists that have another scenario wizard for which makes it uh, plus five which is uh, egregious, but it's a great way to shut magic faces down. It's so oppressive. My, um, my opponents were uh, reeling from, from the effect. They just didn't do their magic faces. And in this um, GHB era, there are many armies which will include one or two wizards just to take advantage of the primal dice and have uh, perhaps one or two very nice buff spells um, like Mind Razor, which have the Daughters of Cain, you know, or, or the Mo from the, uh, uh, the Ogres, the Ogres, and you just shut their magic face down. And even versus the strong casters, you are very strong even against those. I mean, with plus four or plus five and the reroll, and uh, you know, on the third one, you may use a primal dice on the one which you won't have the reroll. So, if you shut down the th uh, two or three of their uh, crucial spells with which their army uh, functions and works, it's a, it's a, it's a huge uh, hit for them. Yeah. And now with the new GHB, you could also, if you're not going for Fast Learner, for example, you could also go with Spell Eater. 
and Eater spells on a 5+, plus, which is not very good, and I do think that Fast Learn is better, but just the threats of having a plus 4 or plus 5 on Unbind Hero with 20 wounds bodyguarded by Blade Lords that deletes your spells on a 5+, plus and then you'll never be able to cast that spell anymore. Wow. Croak players beware. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Um, okay, cool. Yeah, so the Sendoi build, with, we could honestly do a, an entirely diff um, different video and separate video on, t on that subject, which I had planned, honestly, but I was waiting on uh, the tournaments uh, that I was going to do uh, before I would do that. So may maybe uh, we'll do that video in a, in a couple of weeks, weeks time. Sure. sure. Um, let's get into the scenario wizard. So we're lacking one wizard here, obviously. Um, the Enlightener was not yet included in this tier maker video. Um, so we'll use a stand in for her in a little bit. Let's start off with the, uh, the probably one of the weaker ones, the Calagrave. How do you feel about the Calagrave, Sieg? Well, I don't feel he's the weaker one, really. He's um, not the weakest. That's probably the lore seeker, right? Latest uh, list, I included two of them. Okay, interesting. <laughs> That, that is for the purposes of uh, having m multiple uh, heroes to, to cast the blizzard. Right. And if something happens to one of them, I can have a backup because he's the cheapest one. Yeah. But I uh, put very high value on his War Scroll spell. Okay. Eraser, now, especially now that most armies don't have the shooting to snipe heroes, a razor can uh, quite effectively kill a small hero within two turns, of course. Mm -hmm. That gave it. But 2d6 mortal wounds is great. And it can also do damage in a monster or a hero monster or something big. And uh, he's cheap enough. He's the cheapest way for you to get um, the the extra uh, plus one to unbind from the rune of Senthoi. Yeah. And so I feel he has a uh, very good utility. He's usually the one I use to have the protection of his spell. Mm -hmm. And he can, you know, he exchanges between protection of his and his War Scroll spell if the, uh, the opportunity uh, arises. So, especially on builds with Rune of Senthoi, I think he's a great, great choice. Yeah. The reason why I call him one of the weaker ones is because, contrary to you, if you only run one, I do feel that Erasure is very easy to uh, play around, first of all, and then you're also wanting him to cast a different spell a lot of times too. So there's there's not been a lot of times where I actually had time to put Erasure on or where I decided not to do it simply because I knew that there was probably not going to be a time where I could uh, plays a second erasure. That's mostly the reason why I don't really rate him as highly. But I do feel like he is included in a lot of lists simply because it's cheap. Ten points cheaper than the Cathalar. Yes, and you don't want to have uh, two Cathalars. There's no reason. Yeah, yeah. So why don't why not have the utility, the mm -hmm. extra utility? For sure. So um, I'm inclined to put him either in solid or strong. What do you think? I think all our scenarios are strong, yeah. almost all. Oh, not the second one, right? <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, I agree. Uh, strong is, is fine. Um, not specifically because he himself is super, super strong, but it's, it's, also, it's, it's always good to include him because he's just another scenario, especially in the uh, Centoy build. But with the Zydrek as well, even if you're not running Centoy, it's nice to have him around. And it's a, he's a good carrier, as you mentioned, for um, blizzards, which is a very strong spell. Um, okay, so I'm, I I kind of described him as the one of the weaker Sonari. Um, there are only being five of them. Uh, we're probably onto the weakest one now, which is the Lore Seeker. Again, how the mighty have fallen. He was he was he used to be the wizard to use with. Um, uh, wow, the rerolled hit spell that you mentioned on Sentinels. Yes. Uh, yeah. You mentioned it a couple of seconds ago. Well, a couple of minutes ago. Um, anyway, yeah, he was good for that. Now there's not really much point in having him anymore, except if you want to be in range for a Merciless Blizzard straight away, but then you really want to take the first turn. 
And if they don't, if you don't get it, or if you are not keen on taking that specific game, it's a lot of points wasted. He's just way too expensive. He would be totally fine if he dropped 50 points, I feel. And he, he's, he's very good in that regard then, but then you're also not running him in a Centoy build because he's probably out somewhere on his own. So I think even with 50 points cheaper, he would still not always be included in a list. I don't really see a point in having him in any list right now, but maybe you feel different, Sieg. Well, if he was 130 points, even a 30 points drop, uh, I would include him in most of my list, just for the option mm -hmm. to, to have the, the, his deploy. Yeah. Uh, yeah. His de and he is... Uh, relatively decent fighter for a wizard and uh, he has a shooting attack he's he has a uh, six wounds a four up save uh, which all are valuable uh, assets when you uh, for for a wizard i mean yeah uh, so at 130 points i think he will be great now i think he's a niche choice you will only include him if you have a one drop and you won't him to cast uh, a blizzard on the first uh, on the first turn but yeah. the thing is even in those in this list because i have pondering using him mm -hmm. even if i was to be a uh, pigeon hold on uh, on a one drop list even with one drop if the other guy has a one drop it's a 50 50 yeah and you have paid all those points and I mean, even if you uh, if you manage to cast the blizzard on the first uh, on the first turn, then you you traded 160 points for hopefully for something uh, of higher value. Yeah, uh, which will not always pan out. Yeah, I just really don't like him because even with Antorian acolytes and with a chance of rolling your um, primal dice, both you and your opponent. If you don't get any primal dice, and even if you're going first with a one drop, as you mentioned, you're still not guaranteed of getting those primal dice, and then you're not casting Blizzard at all. Yeah. And then you you, you deployed him for no reason, as close to the enemy as you as you did. Um, honestly, I'm in the avoid category, but I can could also see him in niche. Um, it's just like, he, I, I feel like he, he, he sits well next to the Venari Lord Regent and I do feel like I would prefer a Banner Blade bef uh, over the um, <laughs> uh, over the Lore Seeker, but you know, that's uh, nitpicking here. For sure, and I mean the only argument for him to be included in the niche category is the Blizzard, nothing else. Yeah, yeah. If, if you're fine with it, I would probably prefer him in a Void. Sure, sure. Yeah. Okay. Uh, moving on to the Cathalar, um, I think if we're talking staple units, she's probably the staple unit uh, that is in the Lumineth roster because she's never not been popular. Uh, for a while, I, I really did not dig her, but then she was still ran in a lot of lists simply because her War Scroll spell just wins you certain matchups straight from the get-go. Um, if you're running into uh, Gits, for example, or any destruction army most of the time. Um, Darkness of the Soul, which is a War Scroll spell. Wow, really does a number on them. I feel like she's in the strong or even maybe awesome category, especially because she, she took such a strong points drop. She's 130 now, which is, su or 120? No, 130, I think. 120. 120? 120, yes. Man, <laughs> that is cheap, very, very cheap. Uh, I remember, I think I talked about this with you when the um, the, the points drops for the, this GHB were, were leaked. Or for, uh, oh no, it was when the new book was com coming out and she was 120 and I'm like, this, is gonna, this has got to be a typo, right? And sure, her War Scroll was nerfed in that book, but she's still very strong for what she does. Yes, yes, uh, for sure. I mean, I will put her... Uh in strong but above uh, the twins and uh, yeah. uh, the Calgrave, the yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, she's a solid choice and you know the fact that she absorbs the minus one to bravery matters. Yes. Even <laughs> that point matters and passing it on to the enemy units also matters. It, it, may, it may not matter always 
but I found that it it was a you know a sleeper <laughs> a buff that really helped me in quite yeah. a few battles. Yeah, you, you uh, don't think it matters a lot until you actually start using it often, and then you're like, oh wow. Let's say that seven is the you know in the middle of the pack bravery for you know standard units. You're rolling seven on two dice most of the time statistically. So reducing that 7 to a 6 bravery and then combining it with dark Darkness of the Soul, phew, spicy. Yeah, and I mean, the difference uh, when you lose uh, an extra zombie or not is uh, neglectable, but yeah. the difference of losing one Kurunoth Hunter uh -huh. <laughs> or not losing one Kurunoth Hunter is huge. Yeah, yeah, I mean, and against Squeaks, for example, a Squeak Herd of 36 Squeaks, I think they're three bravery 3 or something? Reducing yeah, that unit to bravery two, they're not doing anything most of the game if you get darkness, darkness of the soul off. Yeah, I, it's huge. It's huge. Yeah, um, I mean, she, she could be bottom awesome. I I think or bottom mm -hmm. also or top strong. I, yeah, I, I yeah. Think. Let's put her in strong uh, because I do feel like she she is susceptible to a lot of mortal wound damage still, uh, and if you're playing against a death army. She loses a lot of usefulness, for example. I use her against a OBR to against Nick, who, who, who uh, played his OBR tournament list against mine, and her spell really did nothing. Because Bravery 10 or 9, it, there's just not a lot of times where it actually matters. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's many armies. It's uh, Undead, yeah. Demons, Seraphon, uh, Starborn, you yeah. know, it's... Yeah, I don't think Starborn still get a 10 Bravery, though. Oh, Do they? Yeah. I think they lost that. Or I've, I've not played them right for the past couple of months. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm most likely it's my bad memory. I, I think they, they lost that. Um, but yeah, that, that used to be the case as well. Okay, um, so I kind of want to cheat in the Enlightener here as well. And either we're going to use... I mean, this battalion picture, for example, or we're just going to say where she sits. But the Enlightener was the most recently recently released uh, Lumineth hero. She's a two-cast wizard. And the thing that makes her awesome or strong in my book is on a 3+, plus, she doubles her uh, first successful uh, cast. That is from the Lore of Ish, which changes your playstyle completely if you get it off i do feel um what are you th how, how how are you thinking about her because you are the scenario man um i would probably not build a lot of lists without her uh would you well not lists that which in which i don't include the rune of senthoi mm -hmm. but uh, i believe she just for the double speed of his she's almost an auto include yeah she's uh she's, she's too expensive in my opinion she should be like 160 150 it would be more fair mm -hmm. compared at least to similar uh, units uh and heroes other armies have yeah uh, but uh you know with rune of senthoi you get the second unbind and the third with uh uh fast learner which is the only way you can have it Mm -hmm. So, if you run Rune of Senthoi, she is your general, and that's that. Uh, otherwise, um, I believe she's still great, but, you know, the the problem with the with her ability, you can't build a strategy on a 3-up. Yeah. You just can't. It's great when she does it, but every turn that I, uh, uh, I'm thinking my, uh, my moves for that turn, I always, uh, I, I'm thinking of one speed of his and i'm trying to uh, position myself in a way that if i get the the second one i can take a, take advantage of it because if you plan your strategy and you don't ro roll that three up mm -hmm. you, you may not be able to do your battle tactic or maybe something worse you know yeah yeah you mentioned that you're uh, never leaving home without her in a Rune of Centoy build. I would actually say you're also almost never leaving home, home without her in a um, reimagined Yometrica build. With the yeah. recent Yometrica buff, I feel like running two cows is much more viable than it was before. 
Uh, Agaroth will def from our Discord will definitely say that two cows have always been awesome. <laughs> but um, <laughs> having two cows and then potentially having double speed of vision on both of them is so scary. Or even having on speed of vision on Eltharon and one cow is very threatening, especially if you consider our uh, lightning reflexes or lightning reactions that allow us to activate two units to fight um, instead of only one. That is a lot of damage running straight at you. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, so I would also put her in awesome or strong. Um, what are your think? What are you thinking? Um, uh, strong is fine. Yeah, me, me thinks. Cool. Uh, just because uh, she's quite expensive and her war scroll spell is crap. Yeah, yeah, it is. It is. And I did build a list without her just recently, um, with a lot of stone guard and only one cow. I didn't really see a point in having her there. Uh, and she is still quite expensive, we've got to be honest about that. She is the difference between bringing a one, one wizard or uh, a smaller wizard with, a, with an endless spell, which is sometimes better. Okay. Yes, I mean, if you, if you don't run Rune of Senthoi, perhaps you're better off with two Caligraves. Yeah, yeah. Moving on to the Hurricane Temple, which used to be all a rave uh, only a year ago or something, where you, where you were seeing a lot of foxes. They were not nerfed, but kind of limited by GW, uh, by making them all leaders, so you couldn't just spam uh, foxes for days. I don't really feel like it's still necessary to have them as a leader, but you know, they still are. Um, and I've not seen a lot of Wind Spirits or Severets in any lists. Um, but he's, especially Severi is kind of making a comeback right now, I feel. Uh, especially with the Lookoutser now, how, how it works. Severi is very strong. I, I think a lot of people are mi missing out on including him because they just want him to be what he used to be. And he's, he's not that um, charge-blocking menace that he was before, but he's now our new sniper unit. He's our new Sentinels unit. He's basically a ballista with 24 inches that can get into your opponent's 12 inch lookout sir range and then dash 12 inches back. Um, I mean, I, I still think he's uh, too expensive. Uh, mm -hmm. He should be at, uh, another 20 points uh, down. But yeah, he is one of the few shooting units in the game uh, who can go and... Uh, solidly murder a, a small hero yeah uh, because you can cast speed of his on him he can pass above the, the hero for a three up d3 mortal wounds and have best day ever or a triumph and shoot him with you know uh, you can also use a crystal or do an all-out attack so you will still hit on two up even uh, uh, above lookout sir of the opponent because you will have a uh, a two up with a plus one and a minus one it's still a two up and you can r relatively uh, easily uh, kill a small hero yeah uh, my only problem is that yes you will retreat 12 inches but there are some times that he will get caught yeah for sure mm -hmm. and if you kill the hero that will be 130 or 150 points you you, you need to kill two of these <laughs> to make your points back yeah and if Severeth gets caught it's, it's you, you trade it badly yeah yeah i he's as most lumina units are to be honest he's a scalpel uh he needs to be used in the exactly right way or you're gonna not, not get see his points uh be returned to you um against a caradron list for example you're not gonna oh wow uh Okay, we heard some static there, but it's okay. Um, uh, he's not gonna... You're not gonna play him as aggressively as you are against, let's for, say, an Iron Jaws build, for example. Um, but he's still very good. And if if you're running into a, an, an opponent that can deal with him or that can still get to him, even with his 12-inch retreat, um, then just play him as a Dawnrider unit. Put him on the flanks. He completes battle tactics on his own. Uh, he can ruin great ground strategies, he can uh, deal with a spell casting savants, he can uh, get into the middle of the board uh, to deny the, um, that ground strategy that I kind of forget right now, control the nexus or something, 
Or is that a battle tactic? I don't know. Um, there isn't a, a grand strategy where you have to have more units in the middle than your opponent, right? He can also uh, kill uh, faction terrain pieces. Yeah, which in is... In a way that no, no other unit in the game can. Yeah, super, super strong. Um, against Gits, who tend to take uh, the grand strategy to de defend their, um, their shrine. Uh, very easy to, to deal with that. Um, yeah, I... If you have one good line of sight blocking terrain piece that is sort of in your zone still, but more towards the middle, he is so good because you dash over it, you shoot, and then you dash back behind it, and then he's most of the time he's safe because he's not that difficult to hide if you have some decent big terrain pieces. Um, yes, and I mean, he always, he's always a threat for uh, an objective in the back line of your army, which they may have just a unit of 10 uh, chaff uh, dudes. Yeah, for sure. He can deal with them and grab that objective. And he can, and you know, it's again the psychological warfare because when you have him on your list, your opponent must be very mindful of yep. his deployment yep. and of how he places his heroes because you know, otherwise we, we are not a fast army. So. They, the enemy heroes can sit back uh, quite comfortably mm -hmm. without uh, worrying much. Mm -hmm. uh, but as soon as uh, Severeth is uh, in your list, they uh, it can lead to, to to them making mistakes or yeah. not uh, moving as uh, as they wanted. Yeah, you know, except for the case where you're playing against a very shooting heavy army like Ko. Um, He's so good if you're playing on the sides of your board because your opponent has to deal with him at some point, most likely. And if you're you, he because of his movement, you are allowed and able to play him towards the very very end of the battlefield, so towards the edges. And a lot of units kind of have to spend a lot of long time to get there, and then a long time to get back towards the middle of your army. So if you play him away from your army, because mm -hmm. there's really no reason to keep him um, in your army uh, most of the time, um, you're seeing a lot of benefit from that as well, because your opponent has to dedicate a, a certain amount of points to dealing with him. Yes, and uh, if you don't kill him, he is he doesn't uh, lose any of his efficiency, yeah. and he can uh, he's a he's a hero. He can uh, do do heroic recovery, yeah, and uh, he has a ward save which is uh, useful versus uh, mortal wounds. Mm -hmm. But again, he doesn't have the um, the lookout the good lookout, sir. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so he can be targeted, and I mean, well, if we play versus a good uh, KO player with a good KO list, chances are uh, Lumineth are not. Uh, <laughs> Uh, really uh, build to, yeah. to fight uh, yeah. those kind of myths. Yeah, my, my most regular opponent plays KO now, and uh, it's been a bad time. <laughs> um, when I play my Seraphon, there is really nothing he can do against that, because Krog just deals with all his small heroes before he actually gets to play them. Um, but Lumineth have such a hard time dealing with mobile armies, especially mobile armies that shoot. Uh, and Severus is extra weak into that matchup, I have to say. Yes, yes. Yeah, okay. Um, so I guess it comes down to putting him in one of the lighter yellows here, right? Either strong or solid. Yeah, I, I agree, I agree. I'm kind of inclined to put him into strong, but on the bottom side of strong. Um, yes, yes. Yeah, okay. Cool, but it's... Ironically, it's a completely different story for the regular Wind Spirits, at least in my opinion, because I see no point in including those at all. Uh, even if they're 60 points cheaper, I think, right now, um, losing that extra rent going from minus 3 to minus 2 rent and losing a lot of uh, a lot, some of those abilities as well. I mean, I don't know why you would ever run those. Yeah, I mean, uh, well, we have uh, 
uh, a mate in uh, the Lumineth uh, Discord yep. who uh, has a list that uses, <laughs> uh, I think, four foxes, you know, yeah. Severeth and another three. Yeah. Uh, and he's been doing well, but, you know, it's not a highly competitive list. You, you can't... Uh, you can't include uh, the, the spirit of the wind in any uh, meaningful way unless you want that uh, movement and you can't use uh, Severeth yeah. for one or another reason. Uh, otherwise, I think they should be like 180 points instead yeah. of 210, mm -hmm. if they are now. And because at that point, you will say, okay, he's cheap enough as a mobile war machine because that, yeah. that's what he is. Yeah. Um, and okay, I w I'm willing to pay 180 points, but no more. Uh, so I say I, vo I avoid. <laughs> yeah, same. Uh, either avoid or niche, maybe in a or lot. Niche, yes. You're not just never bringing one, right? If you're bringing a wind spirit, you're bringing three. Yes, and I think uh, since we put a lore seeker on avoid, uh, yeah. the wind spirit is not better. Yeah, I agree. Okay, interesting. Yeah, I mean, if you could for his price right now, you're you're almost bringing two ballistas, which is always better, or almost always better. Yes, yes. Okay, I mean, you can you can kind of see where this is going, <laughs> since the normal wind spirits are bad, uh, and Hurricane has fallen off. Uh, the wind's mage has also really had to pay for Hurricane getting nerfed. Um, I don't really see a reason for bringing him anymore. The teleport is nice, but there, you just don't need it as much as you did before. Uh, maybe because the battle attack has changed or just our units are more uh, inclined to move up the board anyway. But he used to be... his bi The biggest reason for him in your list was because you wanted to get transporting Vortex in there. And yes. now I have the Dawn Riders and Severeth and they don't need to teleport. Or I have Alanya and Elford and I have to teleport if they're wounded. Um, so I don't really see any lists where you're including them him still, but maybe you do see a point? Well, not really, because you know his teleport is another hard cast yep. for us. And we have so many spells with eight and, 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 and one with nine, and now we have the blizzard and all that. You, you just have better spells for that high casting value yeah. and again he's not he, he doesn't have the scenario keyword, keyword so he doesn't combo with uh, rune, of, rune of senthoi mm -hmm. and his war scroll spells are not that good and i mean even if you did include uh, a list uh, with many foxes he doesn't have any more the 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 rule that uh, heals them with d3 wounds so yeah, uh, yeah i think he's a void uh, yeah I completely agree. Bottom of a of, of, of void. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. He's probably the worst of all the things that we put in the void right now. Yeah. Um, following up with the last hurricane units, the kangaroos, um, the wind chargers, they had their moment in the sun, <laughs> where they were basically uh, shooting dawn riders, and <sighs> nothing has really changed, to be honest. They, they haven't been nerfed. I just don't really see a point to them with Dawn Riders being this cheap. Even if they were the same point cost as Dawn Riders, I would still take Dawn Riders over them simply because they Dawn Riders have a spell cost and have a better save and Shining Company. Yeah, that was always the case for me too. Always, I always preferred Dawn Riders. Yeah. Even in Helon lists, I would prefer Dawn Riders. I believe the only reason they were included was the fact that they were battle line. Exactly. Yeah. And wardens were worse. <laughs> yeah. And more expensive. So yeah. that was the only reason people included them. Um, their shooting, it's it's uh, ignoring ward saves. It's great. But their damage output is so low. Even in Helon, even with plus one to hit and plus one to wound, it's still low. Mm -hmm. And any shooting unit that must go within 12 inches to do their shooting, it's not good. They die. They will yeah. die afterwards. Yeah. And they're, they're not tanky. I mean, there just isn't a, a good role for them. Exactly. And, uh, their rule... This is the problem with many... Uh, Fast cavalry, yeah. quote unquote. Yeah. Uh, 
they don't hit hard, they don't, they can't take uh, damage, they are fast, but being fast on its own doesn't mean uh, anything in my mm -hmm. opinion. Yeah, and I mean, they're, they're just as fast as armored Dawn Riders, which makes no sense to me whatsoever. Um, and to, to point out here, uh, their rule go where the wind blows allows you to move over terrain features in the same manner as a unit that can fly, but that doesn't count for units, only terrain. Wait. Yes, and uh, even if you have them go and chase a hero to kill him, and uh, you know, uh, piling ab above yeah. Yeah. Uh, the enemy unit, above the screen and all that, still it's, uh, it's not very uh, sure that you will be actually able to, to kill yeah. said, uh, said hero. And yeah. then again, you're trading 140 points uh, for that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Something that may or may not uh, achieve. This unit would actually be a great recipient for the rule that I mentioned on the Sentinels, where uh, they are allowed to target um, enemy units in, with, with a lookout, sir, and without them suffering a minus one to hit, for example. They need an increase on their range, for, at least. Yes. <laughs> yes. But they yes. also need something else, except for, oh, it ignores war saves. I'm like, okay, sure, but at least write it as in you can bodyguard against it or something like that as well. Yes. yes. Um, I mean, have them have three shooting attacks and 18 range. Yes. And have them be at 150 points. Yeah. That will be good. And have them uh, be, have the, the heal on uh, buff. Uh, passive, yeah. just be for the for the uh, hurrican units, and just be a passive uh, yeah. bonus. Whether it was plus one attack, plus one attack, or plus one to hit, or plus one to wound, or mm -hmm. anything, mm -hmm. uh, make them be actually a, a, a main bulk of the army unit in Helon. Yeah, yeah, that will make a niche, but they will be useful. Right now, I mean, just no. Just flat out increasing their attacks permanently, you know, even apart from any sub faction, would make and increasing their range would make would finally make them useful because that is the only thing that we're still lacking, except for a fast, hard hitting, uh, charging units, is something that does low quality but high volume of damage from um, from afar. And that's still something I mean, that yes, we lack. And you can compare them directly with rivers, Namarty rivers, which yeah. are now 160 points and they have doubled the amount of uh, shooting attacks. And yes, they can't move uh, 18 inches, they move eight, but their shooting is that much stronger. And I will mm -hmm. have uh, a river uh, ally unit any time of the day <laughs> instead of them. Yeah, I mean, the rivers are so good into zombies, for example, and these guys are really not. <laughs> Um, yeah, you either have to make him the sniper unit in our army and then change the sentinels to hordes, low, low quality horde killers. Um, or I mean, the damage low quality, not the sentinel unit specifically. Or change that role, I guess. But it always, always made more sense that these guys would be good against specific unit killing because in their lore they really want to come close to you. And Sentinels being a unit of 10 with bows, it just doesn't make sense for them to snipe heroes from 30 inches away. Um, so I always felt that they completely missed an opportunity here uh, in, when it came to their War Scrolls. So yeah, I think both of us are definitely in the Void category here, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. On to the Elrith uh, units. And these guys have had a glow up, a, a big glow up, finally. Uh, the one that I expected them to do for a very long time. They used to ignore minus two or minus one rent, but minus three would just count as minus three. Now they just worsen the rent characteristic by a minus one. And if you're in your metrica, it worsens the characteristic by two, which is much better it's it basically means they have all out defense up all the time and in Metrica they have two all out defenses up all the time which is very very good yeah i mean uh <clears throat> there was a huge glow up and a huge quality of life not only in uh, in terms of power but in terms of uh, micromanagement and having to yeah. look up at rules and argue with your opponent at, at you know the timing of when you change 
the rent characteristic mm-hmm. and you know it, it was a huge mess just a huge mess and it was really sad because you, you got charged by uh, let, let's say for example chaos knights which had a minus one rent initially and you ignored the minus one rent but the modifier came afterwards so you uh, if they had a minus two rent you wouldn't get anything but since they had uh, the modifier you suffered the minus one rent which was silly really yeah and uh, this makes it a cleaner uh, consistent rule and you can actually include an alert unit outside of the metrica and not feel like you're shooting your foot right 100 percent. yep finally finally i would not be uh i would not be feeling bad to include a cow or maybe even two cows outside of your metrica now yes for sure and even uh, even in reverse i would not feel bad playing Eumetrica and only using a cow or two and no stone guards. Yes, yes, agreed, agreed. Um, I believe the stone guard uh, uh, still suffers from that four movement. <laughs> yep. Yeah, so... If, if you would think that six is low, four is low, but four no, is, it is oppressingly it is. low. Yeah, yeah it's, it's worlds apart. Um, I was actually going to run a full Geometrica list for the team tournament that I was going to attend with uh, Nick and Ryan, but then I fell ill. Um, and I had 30 Stone Guard in there, so uh, 3 times 10. And I, I, I tried a lot of variations. I had 15, 10, and 5 at, a, at one point. I had 10, 10, and 5, 5 at one point. Um, and to be honest, even though we'd had this brief discussion in Discord Seek where... Um, your math hammering showed that their damage is quite potent if they receive the right buffs. I am still not very keen on them. I have to say, sure, they're very tanky, and if they're in control of an objective, uh, they have a 4 plus ward against mortal wounds, but they need so much help. They need so much support from a stone mage to make a difference. They need a spell, they need a molten talisman, they maybe even want the unbreakable stoicism. Um, there's a lot of value generated by that one or two stone mages. Um, and even with stone guard being as cheap as they are for 120, I think I might... 130. Pref- 130? 130, actually. Yeah. Uh, and that is one another thing. I think they're too expensive at 130, personally, huh. for what you get. You'd think after um, building a lot of this that you'd know that's 120, but yeah, it's 130. <laughs> Um, yeah, I, I I almost came to the point where I was like, should I just drop the entire idea of Stone Guard and just go Eumetrica with the Centoy build and then two cows? Well, you you can. I believe that mm, I tried uh, three units of ten mm-hmm. uh, personally uh, recently, mm-hmm. and I found out that it's not easy to buff all three of them. No. Um, it's sometimes it is difficult. I don't like uh, the command trait that everyone uses that gives plus one uh, wound on mm-hmm. the unit. It's so restrictive, yeah. so restrictive, yeah. and you already have to be mindful of the twelve inches uh, range of molten talisman for the mm-hmm. stone maids and yeah. his ability and uh, the fact that he keeps our cows in top shape. So. If you add that, it really hinders your uh, your strategy. So I believe um, uh, Stone Guard are, even with this huge uh, buff in defense, are, are worse than Blade Lords yep. as the main choice. And I will use them uh, only in the Metrica and uh, two units of 10 or two units of 15 and just have another unit of five Blade Lords with scenario wizards and still do the Senthoi thing, but just not as efficiently. Yeah. And, you know, still have uh, five blade lords to, to help protect your wizards and just have two units of, um, of stone guard to be mindful and to buff them and all that and keep them as, as anvils and, and potentially as, uh, as hammers. So I think um, they are a strong unit but not awesome. Yeah. They they need one small change. And 
it can be a plethora of changes. They have, they have so many options, but they either need to go to six inch movement. They either need a bodyguard rule for stone mages, or they need to go up in points and get a three plus save. Yes, or make them more expensive, give them uh, three wounds. Yeah, that could also a be A different way, or, or like, you know, like the Paladins of Stormcast. Give them something um, to differentiate them more than our, uh, the rest of our, uh, of our infantry. Yeah. And I mean, the 4-up war, the f- uh, ward save is great, but again, since we lost uh, th- that battalion that made, made, made them account for more models, mm-hmm. it's again iffy. Mm-hmm. when and where you will have it and again that four movement is you know I, I'm a player that likes to take the initiative I want to make my charges yeah. I don't yeah. like to sit and wait for the other guy to, to uh, drop on me yeah. so with four movement and uh, redeploy it's, it's something it's really hard and yeah. yes and even if you cast speed of his you feel like you wasted speed of his because yeah. you, you, they only go 8 inches exactly what I was going to say it even feels bad if you speed of his because oh wow now they're almost as fast as, as normal units yeah it's yeah. Mm-hmm. disappointing yeah and um, I see a lot of people now hyping up Eumetric and I understand why and please continue to do so um, and then they're taking Alarith Aftershock as a grand strategy which I also understand, but then I just want to point out if you're having, ever landing on Nexus Collapse as a mission and you have Elrith Aftershock, you're almost always losing that mission straight out of the get-go. So please be mindful when you're running a tournament Elrith list. Um, it's going to lose against all mortal wound lists <laughs> if you're going full Elrith yeah. because you need that protection of Hish and your opponent will know that you need it because the weakness of Alarith is so obvious, you're gonna lose on Nexus Collapse as well. If you go Alarith Aftershock as a uh, grass strategy. Yeah, I mean, I, I, in my recent list, I had uh, like two, two wizard uh, and a lightener and uh, a stone mage. And while I have uh, made the list in such a way that uh, I can have all my casts, uh, you know, uh, I can have protection of his and speed of his with the with an lightener uh-huh. um, the problem was that you don't get I, you, I don't have any buffs really you, yep. you only have the crystal and the, the one use uh, autocast of the enlightener and the, it was really easy for the opponent to shut down uh, my magic and then uh, all our th- uh, units are even more dependable on that 5 upward save and the speed of his mm-hmm. so uh, it was easy for the opponent to shut down my utility, the yeah. utility part of my army. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Yeah, we almost, if, if you're running your Metica, I think there's also an interesting way to think about a, a Metica list with two cows and only one unit of stone guards to just drop on, on, on an objective and not give them any support. And then you either no stone mage or keep a stone mage near your cows. Because that's all, also going to be a problem at some point. If you want to pray proact- proactively, your cows are moving about, you're either not gonna support them with a stone mage or your stone guards are, are gonna lose the stone mage support, which they really, really need if you want them to do damage. Yes, yes. Or, you know, just as you said, have one unit of 15. Yeah, yeah. And be sure that they will get their buffs. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So they will, are, they are the only target you have for the spell of the stone mage, which makes their uh, mortal wound yeah, output be also five up, seven, six up. Yeah. So you you just have one unit, but it will always get all those buffs, and it will it will always fight in uh, top shape. Yeah. And unbreakable stoicism is very strong because you got to keep in mind the mortal wounds from stone guard are in addition to their normal damage and don't replace their normal damage as it is with power of Hish, for example. Correct. Yeah. Okay, so um, I'm inclined to put them in solid or niche because I would not take them outside of Eumetrica. Um You mentioned strong for a sec there, Sieg? Yes. Um, um, yeah, well, <laughs> perhaps solid is, is more appropriate. Yeah. Okay. Um, I or do niche. F- this is right too. Uh, yeah. Because um, they... Uh, 
But well, I, I think niche is, is yeah. the best because yeah. they are very good <laughs> in their niche uh, yeah. or their niche thing, but uh, not otherwise. Exactly. Yeah, I feel like Solid is uh, not yes, doing... Outside of Metrica, I will still take Blade Lords any day. Yeah, any day. And even in Metrica, I still, I still think taking Blade Lords instead of 30 um, Stone Guard is also very good. Okay. Uh, moving on to the Stone Mage, we kind of talked about her um, already because we had to talk about her with the Stone Guard. She does all this buffing. There's all, all this buffing for the Stone Guard. She can increase their wounds by one. She can increase wound rolls for all units, I think. Because you said one unit, but I think it increases all Alarith wound rolls by one, right? Within, only within 12 inches? Yes, there is an artifact. It's the Molten Talisman. Yeah. Uh, any uh, Alarith unit within 12 inches of the uh, yeah. Stone Mage, as long as the Stone Mage didn't make a charge, get plus one to wound. Yeah, which is um, a bit of a waste <laughs> on a lot of units because... Um, for example, the Spirit of the Mountain already wounds on a two. Yes, it's only good for uh, Stone Guard and uh, Valenor. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, you're obviously uh, bringing her. If, sorry? I think he's a niche unit. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, we don't have to spend too much time on her anymore. She's definitely in the niche category. You only bring her in a specific build. Okay, yeah. cow time. <laughs> the standard cow first and uh, this time around. Um, I was kind of enjoying them before they were buffed already. One in a list was just like as scary as Altharian was in a lot of uh, games. Um, and his three inch reach is very, very dangerous for a lot of, uh, for a lot of people because, because they don't expect it. I placed my cows behind my first screens. I let them charge me and then him just being right inside that three inches and then swing with five damage attacks Whew. spicy but now with the it's even better um what do you think about it well i i think he he needs to go a bit down mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, 320 will be more appropriate i think yeah uh even with the buffs mm -hmm. um but I believe he has a solid place, and not only, not just in the metric. I mean, uh, the re my recent uh, Zytric list will either include a Valenor or uh, an Alarth Spirit, uh, depending on because you know, for uh, the points of a Valenor, you can have an Alarth Spirit unit and another Scenari Mage. So it's it's that kind of a trade-off. Uh, I think it's a really uh, really good choice and. Uh, it can also go in the Wizard Finder uh, Battalion, which, I mean, it's one attack, but one attack with five damage matters. It can. If something uh, big and nasty uh, comes at you. And uh, compared to, to a Valenor in a list uh, that is not in Metrica, um, because outside of Metrica you won't have the Stone Mage to, with the artifact to give the plus one to wound on a Valenor. And uh, even though a Valenor is still better at damage from uh, the normal cow. It's like two and a half to three damage more. Mm -hmm. um, the fact that uh, the, the, the to wound is on a three up uh, gives me anxiety issues. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Because even six attacks are uh, very few. And, you know, it's when you uh, roll the, the to wound rolls and it's on a three up, it's really easy for things to go wrong. And... For some reason, I feel uh, better with the normal spirit. Yeah, yeah, Makes and sense. even the normal spirit, I don't know, it's probably a, a personal curse here, but every time, every time that I attack with the normal spirit, I lose two attacks, always, at least two. Uh, and and with I swear to you, I don't, I'm not looking at the dice when I'm rolling for the cows. <laughs> I'm just not looking at my hand. I just roll them and then look at them because I get too scared. Yeah, <laughs> of yeah. Those, of those ones. Uh huh. Same with the geomantic blast, right? You're like, okay, I just need this one blast to go really well for me. And sometimes I'm so hyped that I'm hitting. I'm like, yes. And then I even wound. I'm like, yes. And then they fill their save. Yes. And then d6 damage. Ah, oh, one damage. <laughs> yeah, it should be d3 plus plus three yeah. or something. Yeah. 
I mean, D6 must be removed from the game, in my mm -hmm. opinion. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> As a damage value. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, just to point out, because I was kind of... Um, I, I wasn't sure whether they would actually fit in the Wizard Finder, but you're right, it can include one, mon one monster or one behemoth that is not a leader. Yeah. Yes, and uh, it, it, it fits a nice uh, role there. Yeah, it does. Uh, it does. Okay, so what are we thinking? I'm inclined to put it in strong right now. Even yes, outside your yes. Strong. Yeah. Okay. Avalanor. Av Avalanor. Um, hmm. I think he's good. He is also too expensive. <laughs> um, yes. 440 points is. He should be 400 points. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's 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 just too much. And okay, in again in Metrica, he's great. Yeah. Um, Outside of Metrica, um, he is really a toss between him and because he, yes, he's a hero. He has best day ever. He has two more wounds that the normal cow can. Uh, mm -hmm. You can use uh, heroic recovery. So that's a big one for me. Yeah, he's much tougher. Uh, he has two more wounds. He does more damage. Um, but uh, he takes up a hero slot when perhaps you don't want him to take up a hero slot and he uh, the thing is that if you don't have the stone mage as soon as he suffers the seventh wound his uh, aura falls to six inches which is a huge drop yeah while the normal spirit drops it's only one unit but it drops from 12 to 10. so you know with six units he he will most likely only give it to units he's he's engaged with mm -hmm. And he loses some of that utility, but it, it, for me, it really is a toss between yeah. the two, depending on what you want to do. Because, uh, as I said, he uh, for the difference in point cost is another Calgrave, really, o yeah. uh, almost. I guess what, what you want to know is if you're running two cows, are you running two generic cows or one cow, one generic cow, and one uh, Avalanor? Well, if I run two, I will uh, run one of each. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'm inclined to put him in solid or niche because as seen with the stone guard, he's very good in Eumetrica and he's okay-ish in non-Eumetrica lists. Yeah, I, I feel solid is, is the best. Yeah. He's not, he's not that, not that niche. He's not a stone mage or a stone yeah. guard or, yeah. you know. Okay. And then, uh, Lyrior, you thrall, um, the Venar Lord Regent of Yemetrica, which is <laughs> just... Uh, I, I, I cannot tell you how much I hate the entire... Just just his War Scroll by itself, I hate, but all, also the, the concept of him existing is disgusting to me um, because he has no synergies whatsoever in Yemetrica. No synergies. Yes, it's, it's baffling. It's baffling from a lore standpoint. It's 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 baffling from a rule standpoint. Yep. It's, it would it's have just made wrong. so much more sense if he was uh, the Lord Regent of uh, Alumnia, for example. Yes, that yes. would make so, so much sense. But then in Eumetrica, oh, we had we have to adhere to our color scheme. That's not true. You're not doing that with Alani and Elothor, right? If. Yeah. They should fix his uh, his nation. I mean, I, I I firmly wish they reckoned him in the next uh, battle tome yeah. and he comes from another uh, realm. Perhaps one of the two nations uh, that we don't have any info yet, mm -hmm. the Tyrion, Tyrionic ones. Yeah, exactly. It would have made much more sense. I do feel like he, they would have done that if the Tyrionic nations would already be available. It would have been also very cool, actually, to just do it either way and then give us this spoiler like he's actually from a different nation and you're going to get rules for that later on. Uh, but then not keyword him, obviously. Um, yeah. 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 It just it just feels bad to, to use him at, at all times. <laughs> Even here, Red Guy, it feels bad. Yeah, I think he's uh, another bottom of a void. <laughs> yeah. I would I would actually say he's, he's fighting for the bottom spot together with a war scroll that we still have to cover <laughs> in my <laughs> eyes. Um, yeah, yeah. Okay, let's move on to the endless spells. So, uh, fun fact, um, I've played Lumneth since day one and I still have not bought their endless spells. 
Um, not that I don't use them, I use proxies for them every time that I think like I'm gonna buy them now in a couple of months time, I'm gonna get them and then one of them becomes useless once again. Um, the Sanctum has never been good, never in its entire yeah. lifespan, uh, even though it looks totally awesome and it would rock to place that on a table, I think. Um, the two other spells are actually very good right now and the, the Twin Stones are good again. Do you wanna oh, take yeah. this one? Yeah, well, <clears throat> the Twin Stones are a, a way for us to uh, enforce a blizzard on an mm -hmm. opponent, really. Mm -hmm. uh, because uh, up until now, yes, we had some important spells that we need uh, for them to uh, go off, but uh, blizzard can be a real uh, game changer. I mean, if you manage to cast two solid blizzards in a game you may win the game just by that because 28 mortal wounds is uh, is a makes a huge difference yeah. and uh the stones ability which uh, for anyone who doesn't know um you cast it and uh, comes with uh, one uh, uh marker a dice on, on one and for each spell that you uh, successfully cast within 12 inches of the stone uh, that marker goes up up, uh, up until 6 and then you can uh, at any point uh, whether it, it is on a 3, on a 4, on a 5 or anything you can uh, use it it gets dispelled and you get plus X on your uh, casting value for an important spell and for only 30 points now so yes, cheap. if you have those 30 points and you have Blizzard in your uh, list I will include it any day yeah yeah, and keep in mind there is a battle tactic in our book. I think it's called Hishmaid Manifest. Uh, that wants you to have two endless spells on the battlefield at the end of your turn. And the Twin Stones are not an endless spell that you, endless spell that you want to throw forward. So you could actually very safely cast it outside of an Unbind Rage and still have some benefit from them after a while. Um, and if you include the Grave Tide, for example, that's 60 points for your battle tactic if you ha keep your wizards outside of Unbind Rage, um, which is not too bad. I would probably include a, a, a third endless spell if you want to go for that battle tactic just to be safe, but um, yeah, very good. And then we uh, we come to the, the rune here, um, which is also very strong. It has seen a lot of play with Teclas because it's actually quite hard to cast, um, but it doesn't affect, it doesn't harm uh, Lumineth units. Fun fact, it also doesn't harm enemy Lumineth units, so that's interesting to note. Um, but it does mortal wounds at the end of all movement phases and it halves movement as well, I think? Or it, or it reduces movement? Uh, plus one, uh, minus one to charge and run rolls. Oh, that's the one. Unit yeah, that's the one. Yeah. So um, two out of three good endless spells. Um, where are we placing these? Uh, we'll say uh, solid. Solid, yeah, I would agree. And then here we come at the Miyaris Purifier's War Scroll, which is a uh, Underworld's Warband. And even though all the models look kind of cool-ish, um, they are fighting with Lirior for the bottom <laughs> War Scroll. Yes. <laughs> I think I even I hate Lirior even more, just because he has yeah, I, so I much more potential. Lirior. <laughs> yeah, but their war this War Scroll is utterly useless as well. Um, Miyari has a spell that um, enforces minus one to hit against uh, him and minus one to hit for missile weapons that target units within six inches. Six inches is such short range and do you actually even need that Need that in this meta with Lookout Sir being a thing? And then his three uh, extra models on, on his, in his team just have, as, as the only rule, they have plus uh, bodyguard rule on a 2 plus only for Miyari. Man, for the price tag that that unit has, I wouldn't even include it for 100 points, I don't think. Yeah, I mean, uh, <laughs> he, he's just bad. And yeah. The fact that they are in Metrica again, is, <laughs> it, it triggers me, really. Yeah. Because, I mean, if you will figure that he will be Zytrek. I mean, and yes, he has plus one to cast. So on Zytrek, th then yes, I pay extra points, but I get plus two to cast. I get something out of him, but no. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Bottom of the barrel yep. for him to. 
Okay, and then we come to the last two uh, pictures here, which is a bit weird to place on a um, tier list because obviously you get the shrine for free. But I did want to talk about it a, a bit before we end this video, Seek, because um, maybe if you're just starting out with Lumet and you're considering, do I actually have to bother buying the shrine? Uh, and if I do, how do I use it? Where do I place it? Uh, we could once again do a different video on this as well, but um, just pretty quickly. Um, obviously, the shrine, I think, short answer, do you want it? Yes. Uh, but how good do you actually think it is? Uh, strong. Yeah. Why, um, why is it strong? Well, um, I, um, the fact that you actually need to have a hero uh, garrisoning it to, have, to reap all the benefits, uh, for me, knocks it down from awesome to strong. Because there are some times where your list doesn't... Uh, it doesn't help with, with your list building. I mean, you can have uh, a wizard uh, to just do the um, total eclipse yeah. and just be on a shrine. Yeah. But then if you have a wizard there, uh, the, the command ability is only 12 inches. So then you don't really reach out to, to use that command ability uh, so easily. And you can't have your general be there because he's kind of uh, vulnerable. So it's... Uh, it's a really hit, hit or miss, you know. Uh, I think it's great because the reroll on uh, the casting uh, and the unbinding and the dispelling is, yeah. is huge. It's mm -hmm. huge. Mm -hmm. But uh, it's 12 inches, and if you want it to be on 24 inches, again, you have to put a hero inside. So it will be awesome, but this uh, um, limitation is what knocks it down a notch uh, on the strong uh, tire for me. Yeah, same. I would also place it in strong. Um, I think a lot of people, especially beginners, get hung up on the idea of uh, it needing a Shrine Guardian. But honestly, you don't actually need to garrison it per se. Sure, is much more useful when you do. But if, you're, um, if it kind of breaks up your formation when you're deploying, for example, or if you're feeling un uncomfortable, or you're playing against a, a charge-heavy uh, opponent, it is totally fine to use this as a screening piece and not garrisoning it, garrisoning it yeah. at all. Create a choke point. Yeah. Yeah, and it, it, I used I used to love this piece in the uh, previous uh, GHB because you had that grant, that battle tactic where you had to control an, uh, a train piece in your opponent's uh, deployment zone. What was it called? Uh, Oh God! Uh, you know what I I'm talking remember. about, right? Yeah. Yes, but I, I can't remember. Yeah. The... And the fun thing about the shrine is you can't control it as an opponent. If it's if it's if it's if it's mine, you can't control it. As in, if it is taken in my list, you cannot control uh, faction terrain pieces, um, which I loved in in the tournament scene or as a. It's, it was a little bit of a, as a gotcha moment. I have to be honest here, but that was such a a tiny little detail that even a lot of tournament players didn't know about. Oops, yes, sorry. yes. So yeah, sure. I love that. Uh, let's put it in strong. And then to close it off, let's uh, just quickly consider the book as a whole. A lot of people have been down on it. Um, even though it's a magic season, we didn't seem to do well. And I do kind of blame Techless and Nets listing for that. Uh, because we don't... Re Maybe it's for the entire AOS community, but I feel like Luminous uh, players specifically love the control aspect of Lumineth. If you're playing Lumineth, not for the aesthetics alone, but for their um, play style, you love controlling the battlefield. And yes. Techless yes. is such a key piece in doing that, that I understand you or us wanting to, wanting to include him. But right now we have the tools to deal with this season and it, the, that tool is just not Techless anymore. And I feel that once you try to accept or start to accept that, our book is kind of showing a lot of more strength than the numbers are telling us right now. Would you agree? Yes, yes, I agree. I think uh, we are uh, solid and perhaps even strong. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Uh, if if uh, the, those tires had uh, battle tomes, I would put us 
on the highest solid uh, place or on one of the low strong. Yeah, I completely strong. agree. Yeah, we're not going to top the 55% win rate or something, but I think a good player will win more games than lose it lose with this army. Uh, especially yeah. if you consider the meta armies right now, we are actually kind of okay into OBR. We yes, yes, we do all right into them. We are with the Centoy build. You're just sending home all the Seraphon players, <laughs> uh, even even if they're uh, coalesced and they bring a lot of monsters. You don't really have to fear that with Venari troops because you have the minus one to hit as well. Um, yes. I think the only uh, only meta tyrants that are very difficult for me personally to deal with are uh, KO, which isn't really a meta tyrant, I guess, but just a, a d very difficult matchup for me personally. Um, and I think for our it army, it is for Luminate in general. Yeah, for I our mean, army in general. Apart from some uh, old techlist list where you know you teleported techlist and you did his uh, his uh, seeing yeah. of uh, yeah, white, storm. Storm, white light, mm -hmm. and then the rune. And then the, the the spell from the um, uh, Lord of the Mountains, which uh, yeah. you draw a straight line Living and you Fisher. make you know, damage all the units inside a, a boat. Apart from that, we don't really have ways. Our army is not fast enough, uh, is not tough enough uh, to, to weather their shooting. So it's an uphill battle. Uh, so I believe if uh, two uh, players of uh, equal uh, st uh, strategic capabilities face each other, the KO player has the upper hand, for sure. Yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. And we'll need some luck to, to come on top. Yeah, and Soul Blight's also very difficult for us, right? Even with the nerves. Yes, the, 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 uh, the mortal wounds... Uh, 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 splash from the zombies and the fact in general we we have problem with uh, war of attrition yeah so armies who keep shoveling uh, units on us have an edge because we uh, we can't uh, we're not an army built for uh, five uh, battle rounds I think mm -hmm. yeah uh, we can't withstand uh, such a war of attrition so there are some uh, drawbacks, but on the other hand, we can deal with many things. And yeah, it's interesting if, that you mentioned the corn. Yeah, corn. Even yeah. with corn, because our spells are buffing. Yeah, exactly. are mainly not targeting the opponent, and you can uh, work around the skulls with uh, our autocast uh, abilities. Uh, so, I think we're we're in a very uh, good spot. I think a very healthy spot. Yeah. I uh, tend to agree. Yeah, I was a bit down on it before. Uh, I mean, just when the book came out, I felt like the magic season kind of screwed us over instead of buffing us. But once you lay into the Centoy build, or even now with your Metrica, it feels good. It feels fun to play your Met Metrica. I just really don't enjoy Stone Guards because I don't like slow uh, units. I don't want mine yeah. as much when I'm playing my zombies because I don't really care about them. <laughs> But uh, moving those fiddly pieces of stone guards and then just having them sit there and not doing anything because your opponent moves around you is uh, annoying. But yeah, well, I, I believe the, the next temples and the Tyrionic part of the army will make us uh, one of the best uh, one of the best battle tomes, if only in uh, terms of different playstyles. Yeah. I think that will unlock the army and it yeah. will make it enjoyable for all kinds of players. Exactly, exactly. If they figure out a way to um, make Hurgan useful without being oppressive, that will also change a lot of my feelings towards Lumineth because speed is fun to play with, but you don't want to get punished by them not doing damage ever, right? Yes. Okay, Agreed. let's put it in, in solid. There we go. Uh, Siegfried, thank you for uh, joining us and uh, doing this video with me. Uh, maybe it's interesting uh, to do a Runo Centoy uh, video in the near future. If you guys are interesting, in, interested in that, uh, Siegfried no has played the Runo Centoy build for a very long time and I do think it's probably the best Lumineth uh, build that you can go for at the moment. Yes, for sure. Yeah, and Eumetrica sure. is 
kind of close. It does well in into completely different matchups, to be honest. Um, but Yumerica also has a lot of play. All the other nations right now are so bad to the point that I almost forget what, they're, what they did or do. I can almost not tell you exactly what Iliatha does anymore. <laughs> yeah, it's sad times. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay, uh, let us let us know in the comments whether you enjoyed this video and what you want to see next. If you want to uh, hear Seek uh, talk a, a bit more about the Synthoid build, definitely drop a comment in, uh, in the section below. And we'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.